الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي رفع السماوات بغير عمد والصلاة والسلام على الذي تم حسنه وبهاؤه وعلى آله الطاهرين طيبين وعلى أصحابه جمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Respected listeners, the first to the 7th of June is the National Child Safety Week. And I was browsing online to look at some of the information and guidance available from the government and children's charities. And they give some of the, what we would say is, normal parenting advice so if you have a toddler and you have a habit of drinking coffee or if you're in Yorkshire then Yorkshire tea then the mug should be placed at a at a height the child cannot reach but in today's lecture I want to discuss child safety week from a totally different perspective As parents, it's your duty, it's our duty to be concerned about the physical safety of your children. But more important than their physical safety is their spiritual safety. And this is our faith as those who believe in Allah and his last messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we are more concerned about the physical safety of our children than their spiritual safety, there is a deficiency in our Iman. Again, I am going to reiterate the importance of physical safety. But as Muslims living in the UK, it's vital we concern ourselves with the spiritual safety of our children. Our children growing up in the West face many challenges. Challenges to the Iman. Spiritual destruction. Friends, our children can become millionaires and billionaires but if they leave this world without La ilaha illallah, the millions and billions they leave behind of no value. So I want us to ask ourselves a question. Are we truly concerned about the spiritual safety of our children? And really it's our body language and our actions that gives an answer. Are we concerned about the friends of our children just because the friendship of these friends is affecting the grades of our children at school or because these friends do not offer salah? If our answer is that we are more concerned about these friends affecting the grades of our children at school and we have no concern about their friends taking them away from salah it means our concern is not with the deen of our children but our concern is with the dunya of our children so we may never say from our own tongues but our actions demonstrate where our true concern lies. When it comes to madrasa, Alhamdulillah, 95% of parents are supportive. And I'm talking not about this madrasa here. I'm talking about my general experience in the madaris I've taught at. And this is an experience of ulama throughout the country. When it comes to madrasa, and when it comes to school, How many of us would allow our children to take a day of madrasa because we've decided to take them to a park? And my question is, would this feeble excuse be made to allow them to miss school? 
So what are we demonstrating through our actions? What's entering the hearts and minds of our children? That in the eyes of our parents, school and secular education has more importance than our spiritual upbringing. These are messages that as parents we are giving our children. When I was growing up, even when I was ill, my parents would not let me miss madrasa. And 15 years later, I am indebted to my parents for the message they taught me as a child about the importance of madrasa. And friends, when our child turns 17, 18 and 19, and he becomes disobedient to us. As is the case with many of our youth today. Who parents come to me or other Imams and say, Morana, my child is doing this, my child answers back. You know, many times as Imams, we may help you as best as we can. But many a times, because we are aware of the child's history and the attendance with Madrasa, <coughs> we know things could have been better if due regard was given to madrasa at a young age and not just madrasa my friends even the friends our children spend time with the primary concern of most parents today is these friends will damage the future prospect of my child his friends don't study hard and my child by hanging about with his children will not study hard. But the question I leave you with today. As a parent, would we be as concerned about the friendship of our friends of our children if his friends were not actively offering fight and salah? And this demonstrates that Salah does not hold the same esteem in our hearts as does education. I am not against education. It's important. We need Muslim doctors, Muslim businessmen, Muslim lawyers. I'm all for education. But the point I want to bring to your attention today is the importance of Islam in the lives of our children. Because I fear my friends and ulama have mentioned this before. And in 50 years, in 60 years, the only thing left of Islam amongst British-born Muslims is the name. We ask Allah for salama wa akhru da'wana. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.